Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we have eight NBA trades to look out for before the NBA draft and eight signings right after that. Um, this is an article by Cam Salas. I think that's how you say it. I am basically going to go through each one of these trades here, give you guys my opinions on those, say if they're good trades, good signings, or if it's a bitch-ass move, because of course, um, I already know what nobody's going to predict like every single one that's going to go down, but still, like some of these might be somewhat realistic, so I do like towering on the Boston Celtics, uh, Lynn Sandy back on the Knicks, that would be interesting, but they do have 17,000 point guards on that team already. Uh, so let's get start, uh, start on this, my friends. If you could do me a quick favor and please drop a like on this video, it would be greatly appreciated, as it does help the channel out so much. And here we go, guys. First trade we have. Well, we start with the uh, Detroit Pistons. Okay, trade Kemba Walker and Marvin Williams for Reggie Jackson, Stanley Johnson, Luke Kennard, and a Pistons first round pick. You know what, man? I don't know how I feel about this because I, I think about this. Kemba Walker as our point guard. He, he definitely is really good. I mean, I think he's one of the best point guards, uh, you know, at least in the Eastern Conference. He's better than Reggie Jackson. He does have injury issues. Uh, Stanley Johnson, he has actually shown, shown some pretty good signs of promise over the past few months or so. Uh, Luke Kennard, I do like a lot. The only knockoff about Luke Kennard is that he was drafted before down to Mitchell. Besides for that, I think he has going to be a pretty nice NBA player and a Pistons first-round draft pick. Um, I don't think I would do this trade. I mean, I guess Marvin Williams could probably play small four. I think he's more of a stretch four out there. But, I mean... I don't know, man. I, I really don't think that Kemba Walker, Blake Griffin, and Andre Drummond is anything that spectacular. I think we're giving a lot of young talent. And also a Pistons uh, first-round pick where if this trade does not work out nicely, then all of a sudden, man, that's going to be a lottery pick for the uh, Charlotte Hornets. So I don't personally like this trade, which is surprising because Kemba Walker was an all-star this NBA season. Uh, next up, we have signing. DeMarcus Cousins signed to the Lakers. I mean... I don't think this is going to happen. It would be cool to happen. I, I don't see it happening unless the team gets like Paul George and LeBron James and still has money to sign a guy like DeMarcus Cousins, maybe even for a year or two due to his injury uh, issues and things like that. It would be cool to see it. Don't, oh, don't get me wrong. There was extra rumors of DeMarcus to the Lakers before. I just, I, I really do think he likes it on the Pelicans and I do think he's going to stick it out there. Um, at least, you know, for the next few NBA seasons to see what him and Anthony Davis can do. Also, Drew Holiday, who has been playing like one of the best point guards in the NBA as of late. Just uh, very underrated, though. So, I don't I don't know if I like this all that much. Uh, next down, we have uh, we have a trade of Jeremy Lin for Lance Thomas and a second-round pick. Now, I know for the Brooklyn Nets case, anytime they can get some draft picks, it's a W for them. They don't have a lot of them as is, although I think it was mostly first-rounders they gave up. Uh, Jeremy Lin does not really have a place on the Brooklyn Nets anymore. You're, they already have two really good point guards. Um, and D'Angelo Russell and also Spencer Dinwiddie, who kind of came out of nowhere and is playing like one of their best players on that team. Now, do I think Jeremy Lin should go to the Knicks? I think there's probably better fits out there for that. Honestly, I would take him on the Detroit Pistons. But going back to that, if Reggie Jackson doesn't really pan out, um, I just, you know, the, the Knicks, they already, it depends who they draft because I think the Knicks might actually draft Trey Young if available. Um, now, if they don't get him, they still have Frank Milikino. They still have Trey Burke, who's been playing nice. And it's like Jeremy Lin is kind of somewhat getting older now. So it's like, do you really want to risk it on him or do you want to work on developing in the rebuild and, uh, you know, work on developing Frank Milikina? Uh, next up, we have Isaiah Thomas signing with the Clippers. This actually be kind of interesting. I mean, the Clippers, they seem pretty, like, sought out on not wanting to do a full-on rebuild. They still want to take, uh, stay competitive. So, with, which doesn't make sense. It's like, if you're not going to go for the championship, why not just go for a full rebuild and try to get a good draft pick that's going to end up being, like, a, you know, a top player in the NBA in a few seasons? I mean, you're already lost on freaking Kyrie Irving when you traded Baron Davis in your first-round pick to the Cavaliers for Mo Williams. Like, that was the Kyrie Irving pick right there. So, I mean, it's like, yeah. I feel like you should go one way or the other because with Isaiah Thomas on this team, sure, he has the uh, capabilities of dropping 25 points per game in an NBA season. I guess him with DeAndre Jordan could be interesting. They got some nice other bench players out there. They got Lou Williams. So the team would be okay. Not win a championship, though. Uh, next up, we got... Oh, hell no, man. Uh, yo, who made this article, dude? Bro, Cam Salis. Salas. Salas. There ain't no way in hell the Celtics are going to give up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and Al Horford, and the Lakers' first-round pick for Anthony Davis, and the bitch-ass contract to be Twan Moore. I mean, I will listen about Jason Tatum, Al Horford, for, and maybe the maybe the Lakers' first-round pick for Anthony Davis. I think I'll listen about that. Maybe Jalen Brown, Al Horford. There ain't no way they're going to give up their two young players, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. That just, that just don't make much sense to me. Like That's just way too much. Anthony Davis, he's fantastic. He's playing like he might be the greatest basketball player ever right now. Uh, I mean, obviously he's not, but I mean, he's, the way he's been playing, he's put up those type of stats, but there ain't no way the Celtics are giving up that much, man. That's freaking giving the whole damn house for Anthony Davis, who would be great for them. Just, um, 
I think you got to take off one of these two players right here for that to really go down. Next up, we have Jabari Parker signed with the Chicago Bulls. So, I actually saw this before. I don't remember uh, what... I don't know if it was a video I was doing or something like that, but there was talks about Jabari going to the Chicago Bulls. And basically, my thoughts on him is that I don't really see him playing a small forward. He's not really lean enough to do that, not really quick enough, um, and not really the greatest shooter to play in a small forward position in this day and age in the NBA. Uh, at the same time, you can't really play power forward on the Bulls because they have Laurie Markin in, who just is, I mean, he's best He's best as a stretch forward. So it's like, that doesn't really make all that much sense to me of uh, Jabari going to the Chicago Bulls. I think there's better opportunities out there for him and better fits. Um, maybe the Dallas Mavericks. I feel like the Dallas Mavericks, if they actually got like a DeAndre Ayton, or if they got a uh, Marvin Bagley who could play center, then all of a sudden you got Jabari at the fourth spot with uh, Dennis Smith Jr. That team, something to think about. All right, next up we have a trade of DeAndre Jordan uh, over to, looks like the Portland Trailblazers for Caleb Swanigan, Zach Collins, Evan Turner, and a first round draft pick. Um, so yeah, so pretty much the Clippers would be getting a good young prospect. I don't think he's, I don't know if he's going to be a good NBA player or not. And Zach Collins, uh, Caleb Swanigan, I don't know too much about him. I know he's had some pretty decent games. Evan Turner is a bitch-ass contract at this point. Not really a player you want to invest all that much time into. But also a first-round draft pick, which, you know, uh, given this type of trade right here, the Clippers would be in a tank mode. So, I mean, that could actually be a future, you know, uh, lottery pick in the NBA. And then the um, the Portland Trailblazers, they kind of get that that third piece in DeAndre Jordan. But I like Nurkic. You know, I know Nurkic gets dunked on a lot. But, I mean, it's like, it's not that great of an improvement. Not to mention Nurkic is only 23, so I don't like this trade either. I listen that Nurkic could learn to shoot three-pointers and play the four, which isn't going to happen. Uh, or, yo, yo, DeAndre, maybe you can learn how to shoot some three-pointers, man. I saw my ugly-ass jump shot. Like, it ain't going to happen at this age. <laughs> I'm the same, man. Okay, moving on. We got uh, signing LeBron James to the Houston Rockets. I am not going to write off the Houston Rockets as a team LeBron James will go to. I think he's already spoken, saying that that would be one of the teams he would potentially pick. Uh, with that being said, though, I just, I don't know, man. I think it's going to come down to how this NBA season ends for the Cavaliers. I don't think LeBron is going back to Cleveland, guys. I know Cleveland Cavaliers fans are going to see this. And they're going to yell at me. And they're going to say mean things about me in the comments. But I just, it just feels like it's time for him to leave that place for good and maybe do add another chapter to his legacy. Um, I feel like he's done all he could do on Cleveland. And if he wins another championship, that's great and everything. But that was that was the big uh, climax of his story at Cleveland was winning a championship. He did that. Uh, then he lost some too. But with that being said, man, Houston Rockets, I don't know. It just, I feel like that's kind of messing with what's already a good thing. Now, if Houston loses the Golden State or it gets, you know, gets bounced in the second round, then it's like, yeah, y'all go for LeBron James and you try to go for the freaking triple seven lottery or something, try to win an NBA championship. Okay, I could see that then. Plus, he gets to play with Chris Paul, which would be kind of cool to see. Um, and, of course, James Harden. I mean, he's like, you know, banana boat squad, LeBron James, Chris Paul. All right, next up, we got a trade of Mike Conley over to the 76ers for Marco Fultz, Jared Bayless, and a first-round pick. You know what, man? I like this trade a lot because the 76ers, they're kind of ahead of the process. No pun intended. JK, totally had a pun intended right there. Uh, Mike Conley gives them a veteran player. You put him in the backcourt with J.J. Redick. Then you got Robert Covington out there. You got Ben Simmons. Uh, Sarwis probably as a six-man. And then you also have Joel Embiid, of course. Thing I like about Mike Conley is that not only does he play good defense, not only is he a guy you can trust in the clutch moment, uh, but he can also shoot. So it's like you know Ben Simmons could still bring the ball up the court, and um, he still got stick, you know, still got stick on Mike Conley because if now he's gonna shoot some threes down again, probably make a few of them too. So, and then of course you know the um, Memphis Grizzlies they get a restart in Markel Foles and a first round draft pick because Markel Foles we still don't know what the verdict on him is. Uh, he could still end up being a really good NBA point guard. I mean, look at Ben Simmons. He missed his rookie season. So did Joel Embiid. Marco Fultz was the first pick in the draft, guys. That, I, I would definitely take that. Not to mention all the money that's off the books of Mike Conley. Although, Jared Bellos has like a two-year bitch-ass contract, if I do remember correctly. Uh, next up, we have Tyreek Evans, signs of the Boston Celtics. Um, because the thing about Tyreek is that he can play point guard, shooting guard, and small four. I feel like... Even in certain lineups, certain ones, he could probably play a freaking four out there, too, if he really needed to. He's 6'6", so I mean, like, real, like a really small ball lineup. Um, so, yeah, I mean, assuming that Marcus Smart walks away from the team and goes somewhere else. They still got Terry Rozier on the team. Um, Gordon Hayward's going to be back next NBA season, so that's going to kind of lock up the small forward position between, you know, Jason Tatum and also um, him out there, too. I'll go, uh, Gordon Hayward. Now, I feel like if this were to happen, Marcus Smart would have to be gone just because, you know, he would bring some more consistent scoring than Marcus Smart. Defense would kind of take a hit um, as opposed to what Marcus Smart does out there. But it's, a, it's an okay sign. I can see him going there. Uh, uh, um, obviously, as a bench roll, though. All right, next up, we got... Whoa, damn, dude. Okay, so this is the dude. Uh, we got Damian Lillard for Kevin Love, Jordan Clarkson, and Brooklyn's first-round pick. I mean, yeah, I get... 
I guess if freaking Rip City out there wants to hit that restart button big time, then I guess you go for that. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, Cesar McCollum, Kevin Love, and the Brooklyn's first round pick, which could be like a Marvin Bagley. That's all of a sudden is a pretty good team, or Michael Porter even. So, I mean, it would be a different look for um, them out there. And plus, Damian Lillard gets to play with LeBron James. And LeBron was like, yo, y'all get me Damian Lillard. I'll show you just how appreciated he really is. So, I don't think that's going to happen. Would I like to see it happen? It would be a nice little switch up. I would like to see uh, him play with, I don't know, because the other thing about this, guys. Would Damian Lillard with LeBron James be better than Kyrie Irving with LeBron James and Kevin Love with they have to give up? Um, I almost see if there's like it's too much almost. I don't know. Uh, we got Paul George to the Lakers. Man, this freaking beating a dead horse right there. Yeah, we all know that Paul George wants to go to the Lakers. We all know it would be a good fit. So I'm not saying too much more about this one. Um, all right, here we go. Ooh. Kawhi Leonard for Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, Josh Hart, and a Cavs first round pick. Yo, that is kind of interesting what you think about it, guys. I mean, imagine they got Kawhi Leonard, still managed to get Paul George, and then also got LeBron James, man. And they still got Lonzo Ball out there. And they would get Brooke Lopez. Ooh, whoa, man. I, I, I'm thinking, like, I need to do a freaking NBA 2K18 What If video on this because that would be absolutely insane. I would absolutely love to see that, man. That would be... Can you imagine that Western Conference Finals of the Golden State Warriors and the uh, Los Angeles Lakers, or I guess even Houston Rockets? I'm interested. Next up, we got um, Aaron Gordon signs with the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, he would go to the Western Conference. I mean, he is young. He's like, what, 23? He goes on a team that's still in rebuild mode. He would give him a few extra Ws out there, but nothing too crazy. Um, but, you know, Devin Booker, Aaron Gordon, that is a team that you can definitely build around five seasons from now. A team that could definitely make some noise in the NBA playoffs. Maybe a little quicker than that. Alfred Payton, if he still comes along. But, I mean, we've already seen Alfred and Aaron Gordon in the starting lineup on the same team together. And Alfred Payton got traded away. So, I mean, it's like, I, I wouldn't expect... My expectations if Aaron Gordon went to the Phoenix Suns would not be too high. Uh, I'd much rather see him sign with the Indiana Pacers, I think. All right, next up we have uh, Andrew Wiggins for Justice Winslow, Josh Richardson, and a first-round pick. I'm not sure why the T-Wolves would do this. Um, I mean, uh, Josh Richardson hasn't had a, had a pretty underrated NBA season, so Justice Winslow um, could still be a good 3 and D player out there in a first-round draft pick. I guess Wiggins gets to go to the Miami Heat, kind of a new change of pace for him, a team where he could probably be the number one option. Um, although, I mean, he's still taking the most field goal attempts per game on the Timberwolves. So, we kind of is here the number one option. Just uh, doesn't really make all the shots. So, yeah, I'm, you know, whatever. I'm not really feeling either way about this one. Next up, we have signing Dallas Mavericks offers Julius Randle big time money. Um, yeah, because Julius Randle has been playing like a beast. Does he deserve a max contract? I really don't think so because, I don't know, I feel like to get a max contract, you got to be more than just stats out there. I feel like you got to bring something else to the court, like some leadership, things like that. Uh, some W's maybe. So, yeah, he would be the replacement of Dirk Nowitzki. Um, definitely the type of power forward that, you know, he is athletic and stuff. Not much of a shooter. He can knock down threes every now and then. So, him and Dennis Smith could be something special, I suppose. Uh, but is it really worth throwing him all that money? Because then all of a sudden your team is locked up to uh, Julius Randle. And then you also got Harrison Barnes. And then in a few seasons, you got to pay the man Dennis Smith. So, do you think that team right there is enough to get you guys where you want to be? Well, then you throw the money at him. But, guys, that is the end right here, man. Let me know in the comment section, boys, you guys think about these trades and these signings. Definitely some really interesting ones here. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop that like. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And peace out, my friends.